Hi everyone, today I'm going to share an art journal page with you. Before I get going however, I just wanted to have a chat to those of you that might be uh, thinking of trying out art journaling. They've watched a few videos and they're thinking of giving it a go and uh, that's exactly how I started in fact and this page is one that I created as a result of watching a video. I wish I'd written it down now so that I could tell you who the artist was that inspired me to uh, try this uh, wonderful way of exploring arts and that's what I think art journaling is. It's a chance to explore, try styles that you've never done before. This one again was uh, as a result of someone else's techniques of setting up their art journal pages. I never actually did get right round to doing the actual journaling part of it. Um, and if you look at the blue space uh, in between these pictures that are put together with bits and pieces from magazines, um, I could have journaled in there and uh, maybe one day I will. But I just wanted to show you how different the styles are that you can try and explore. Art journaling for me is all about that. It's all about trying out different things. And this was, oh, this one is my most watched art journal video. And I created that at the beginning of the year. And I think it just shows you all the different, or it just allows you to try all the different mediums that you can get your hands on. And it can uh, just bring to life thoughts and ideas that you've got in your head. And uh, I hope that my uh, videos encourage you to give it a go and uh, that's why I just wanted to have a little chat with you before I begin and here's my pile of stuff ready to get started. On a lot of art journal pages we use a lot of background stamps to add texture and layers to the backgrounds of our pages and uh, this one's going to be quite clean and simple in that respect but I'm going to be using my stamps to actually create the images you know save cutting things out of magazines or uh, actually drawing them yourself and I'm going to be using this little set of B stamps and um, I've used them before to make cards in, in a class that I taught and I really think they're quite cute and um, I'm going to use them because I've been thinking about the quote that I want to use. I'm not big on journaling at the moment in my pages. I tend to uh, have a thought that I want to illustrate. And this, as I said before, it's all about art journaling and creating it your way and being unique. And it was that word, be, that uh, reminded me of this little set of stamps that I've got. And I'm just sort of sketching out here roughly the idea whether this is exactly how it ends up. As you know, art journaling is all back going. Mean, uh, with the flow and uh, just seeing where the actual paint and creative process takes you and uh, I'm just sketching out a few ideas and then I'm going to get started. So as I put myself into fast forward and uh, get out the distress paints I'm working on a watercolour paper and I'm just building up layers of paint in order to create a landscape ready for my stamped images. So I'm going to put on some nice music which is Flowers by Tchaikovsky which I thought went with the B theme and um, I hope that you enjoy this creative process so I'll be back later with a few hints and tips along the way. So here's my first tip. If you aren't great at creating smooth grady gradients in your background, and uh, I would count myself in that, it's very difficult to do quite smoothly. Then don't try to do it smoothly, try and do it with a little bit of texture. So I'm using a dry baby wipe, I've scrunched it up, and then I'm dipping it into the cut three colours that I'm using for my sky, and I'm using that to blend them. Uh, they don't have to be perfect because I'm using the texture in order to create the blend and it works quite well and it hides a multitude of sins.
wanted to add some shading to my stamped images to, to bring them to life and I'm using my distress inks to do that. So I've just squidged some of the gathered twigs distress ink onto my craft mat and then I'm using them as a watercolour and I'm just blending the edges to create shading um, on my little beehive just to lift it from the page and uh, make it look like a 3D object rather than uh, just a flat stamped image. It's more apparent when I see myself cutting out on farcical wood but it's a tip worth pointing out and that is that when you're cutting out um, small details particularly like this try to move your paper rather than your scissors and you'll find that it makes the task much easier. Outlining my um, flower stems and leaves in black, it makes the little um, stalks that I've added to my stamped images uh, match uh, the stamped details. So it's a way of bringing the two elements together, the pieces that I've um, added myself plus the images that I've stamped uh, on my page. So it's a, it's a good way of bringing the two elements together.
know if you haven't already guessed yet, this is going to be a little canvas and my bee is going to be the artist and I want to create an easel. And this is uh, where the mixed media comes in uh, because you can use anything really on your art journal pages and I had a look through my stash and I put this little piece of veneer away. My uh, eldest son Damien had been using it, something that he left behind when he went out there to Gibraltar and uh, I'm going to use that to make myself a little wooden easel so I don't even need to pretend and draw uh, wood onto paper because I'm going to use the actual wood and you can use all sorts of things that you might have lying around the house to create your art journal pages. And here's another little tip, if you don't like it the first time, try it, try it again. And I had a kind of idea to do little honey pots uh, with paint in for my little artist bee. Uh, only I couldn't quite get a shape that I liked. Unfortunately I couldn't use the stamp that comes in the set because it had like a, a fabric lid and I couldn't um, use that as an actual paint pot so um, I do get there in the end as you can see I think this is the final version coming up and I'm going to use that as a template so there's another tip if you do it right once use that to create any more that you might need to make.
addictive it is. I was really intent or intense or enthralled with creating this little work of art for my bee and really pleased with myself for picking out uh, this veneer to make the easel and that's when the camera film ran out only I didn't notice I was that absorbed so you've missed a little bit unfortunately I've created my little easel I've outlined it in black pen I've stuck my little bee down with his uh, paint palette and his paintbrush and now I'm working on the details of those little jars uh, old honey jars full of paint Most of my art journal pages that I like to add a frame, it, I find it just kind of draws your eye into all the main details of your page and after all we're creating art so why not frame it and uh, I'm going to be using a tissue tape this time, there's lots of different ways of uh, doing frames, you can use strips of paper, you could actually just doodle the frame uh, by hand if you wanted to or stamp a frame uh, but I'm going to be using this tissue tape by Tim Holtz. When you stick lots of uh, elements onto an art journal page, you want to make them part of that page so they don't quite um, look anymore as if they're stuck onto the page. And a nice way to do that is to add uh, shading to the elements or around the elements. And I'm doing that here with a little bit of black uh, soot distress paint. It's funny sometimes when I do these voiceovers for my video and I edit all the bits and pieces out that I don't want you to fall asleep watching, uh, I realised as I was adding in the uh, final details with my black pen here that I've forgotten to add his little antennae back in so I'm going to do that when I've finished working on this video.
the quote I really did struggle with and um, I, was, I was adding these black lines of, of uh, paint around the individual letters I was thinking more and more Do you know what I'm not happy with this and uh, I just thought I would explain to you my uh, thought process and uh, it's really a kind of lesson in uh, you can't just stop you know when you put all this work into it if it goes a little bit wrong you've uh, got to try and think of a way to get yourself out of it you know I've uh, really done a lot of work on this canvas so far and this is the final touch and I mean it looks okay I could have lived with it but I just there was something about it I think the black was just a little bit too heavy um, and I didn't really like all the colour on the letters so I went so far with it and then I thought you know what I'm gonna start again <laughs> I know it looks really crazy, particularly as now I look at it, it didn't look too bad. <laughs> but I uh, I didn't like it at the time and that's what I'd say to you, if you make a mistake or you don't like the way something's going, take it in another direction. So I'm adding the paint and just trying to fade them out a little bit and I was having trouble with uh, the pen that I'd used bleeding back through so it was creating a bit of a shadow and it was that shadow that I ended up working with. So I'm using the paint colours that I've been using on my page and just stippling them and sort of masking uh, the letters slightly and uh, then I'm going to stamp the message again. that for timing I'd like to say um, that it was all planned but uh, it was just a happy accident and quite often things like my little mistake with my journaling turn into a happy accident and I'm much happier with how it looks now and uh, I hope you agree that just keep working on it if it's not quite right and you'll get there in the end I really hope that this video inspires you to create it your way so I hope that this page shows you that your stamps aren't just for the background they can be the focal point of your art journal page. I've had great fun creating this and I quite like the way it's turned out. Even the little mistake, it was meant to be and that's a sign of a crafter I think. If you can cover something up and look like you meant it to be that way, no one knows there was a plan A. Unless of course you've happened to show plan A in your video, uh, in which case they know that there was a plan B and plan B was better. Well I think it was um, and that's what it's all about, making the decisions that you feel are the right ones for your piece of art, making it or creating it your way. So if you've been watching these art journal videos and thinking oh I'd quite like to have a go at that but I'm not sure, just do it because there's no right, there's no wrong, you have to just have a go and do it your way and I would say that I haven't actually got a particular style because I just like all the styles every time I see someone else's work I think oh that's a nice that's a nice look that's a nice look and I just want to try it all and uh, I think <laughs> my art journal pages in fact my work in general I flit about from scrapbooking to card making and art journaling and I love making 3d projects which is what my uh, workshops are all about so I just love to create and I love to create it my way and uh, I hope that I've inspired you to do it your way. So if you like my videos, don't forget to subscribe because I'm really trying hard to get a thousand viewers uh, by the time my uh, birthday comes around, which is on the 23rd of May, so not long now. Um, so press that subscribe button and uh, share my um, artwork or my videos with your friends. And uh, I would love to see you here again soon for another uh, creative journey. As usual, I'll leave a couple of links of interest at the end of this video so you might uh, find some other things that will inspire you to be creative. And until next time, thank you for watching.